hello my lovelies welcome back to my channel this is your girl angel from simply angel tia in this video we're working on crocheting this long dress and as you can see here we're using two colors that are i think they go together really well uh, of course choose the colors that you prefer the matching of uh, but i'm using these two different color this tan color and this pink ish color um, and i'm just using a double crochet to complete the project um, so nothing too serious here nothing too complicated um, yeah so this is what we're going to be working on um, this is also because some of you have requested that i do some dresses on the channel uh, so this is one of those uh, recommendations okay all right the, the dress is super long it's about 52 inches long okay and it's optional you can obviously do it at the same length or you could do it shorter and if you do it shorter you just stop working on your dress when you've reached the length that you're looking for um, and if you want to do it this long then of course you continue to do it until you gain the length that you want okay so this is it here we're going to do the straps a little bit different here as you can see we have thicker uh, straps i would obviously show you how to do that with those ones as well okay all right let's go ahead and get started with the video okay my lovelies so before we get this project started i'm going to show you the materials that i'm using for this and as you can see here i have my two color yarns they are from two different brands but it's actually the exact same size and exact same texture just by touching it uh, but this one here is from as as right 100 acrylic um this is a lightweight number three and recommended hook size is let me get that here for you is three and a half to four millimeter crochet hook okay and this is 50 grams for this size here this uh pink one here is from um hobby we heart yarn it's 100 percent acrylic as well the same as this one and it's 50 grams for a skin and it's a lightweight number three as well and recommended hook size for crochet is four here four to four and a half millimeter crochet hook okay for the crochet size so we have these two yarns that are from different brands but they're pretty much exactly the same so this is what we're going to be combining it with okay i have my scissors here i have my 4.25 millimeter crochet hook or g6 us i have a darning needle and i have a tape measure okay so let's go ahead and get started okay so we're gonna go ahead and get started with the project so i'm gonna start my uh project with this pink color here and i'm going to start by doing a slip knot to be able to do a foundation uh, or the first row of the project so i'm just going to do that like this and then i'm going to start by doing a chain of three so one two and three then i'm going to skip two stitches and in the third one here i'm going to do two double crochets in that final stitch in that last stitch stitch okay so one and two and the chain of uh, the two that we skipped so these two that we skipped counts as a double crochet then i'm going to chain two one two and turn and in this stitch right here i'm going to do two double crochets one and two and don't forget the chain two we start with counts as a stitch so we have this stitch here and the other two that go into the same stitch and then I'm going to do one double crochet in this stitch here and then another one okay and then one double crochet at the end and you do it on top of the chain two of the chain two that you did in the previous row like this okay then I'm going to chain two which counts as a stitch turn in this stitch here i'm going to do two double crochets one and two okay and then i'm going to do a double crochet in the next stitch and then another double crochet in the next stitch and in the next stitch here i'm going to do two double crochets in the same stitch like that and then one double crochet in the end stitch right there like this okay so the fact that we're increasing at the beginning and we're increasing at the end makes it so that it creates this triangle like this and keep in mind too because i have the chain two counting counting as a stitch and then in the next stitch i do two double crochets so we're actually increasing in the next stitch 
and at the end we're increasing not in the last stitch we're increasing in the second last stitch and then in the end we do just one double crochet okay so this is what we're going to work on and you're going to create this to be able to fit the size of your cup um so measure how big your cup is and then do this to be the length so that you can either have full coverage or you can have it a little bit uh, revealing that is going to be up to you so i'm going to create mine uh, until i have my full coverage which is what i prefer and when i have that completed i'll come back to show you guys what it looks like okay my lovelies so i have completed one cup here and for me for a full coverage i did 18 rows so this is my 18 rows here and i'm going to obviously do a second one to be the exact same so just repeat what we did for the first part here and then match it to be exactly the same for the second cup when you have both of them completed come back and i'll show you how to start the next part of the project as well as to change color okay see you guys in a bit okay my lovelies so i've gone ahead and completed my two cups here so as you can see these are the two cups um so obviously you, you should have something that is uh, similar to this beside maybe difference in sizing um and now that we have them like this we're just gonna take so this is where i ended each one of them and i cut the yarn off to start the other and then i cut the yarn off here because we're gonna be changing color so i will just take this yarn that i had left here and i'm gonna do a, a knot in the middle to join this, these two sides like this to make it easy for us to work along it when we work along it okay so we're going to do something like that and then we're going to change the color to the tan color and uh, we're going to pretty much flip this work back like this so we can work from one corner to the other and then we're going to do um uh, i'm just going to wind my yarn here so we're going to do a slip knot to be able to create our slip knot like this okay and then we're going to go right into the very beginning of our project here so the very first stitch right here and then we're going to bring that slip knot into the stitch to the other side of the stitch okay and while we're holding this like this we're going to do a chain two and that chain two counts as a double crochet so we're going to leave that there we're going to move on to the next stitch right here and we're going to do two double crochets in that same same stitch okay and what we're doing here is we're increasing and we're going to be increasing on both sides so that we can start to work the dress downwards okay so now we go to the next stitch and do a double crochet and to the next stitch we do a double crochet and we continue to do the regular double crochets all the way until we have two stitches to go okay so do the same when you have two stitches come back to the video and I will show you how to do the increase at the end. Um, and for this part here, just work your double crochet in this stitch here at the very end. And your next double crochet should be on the other side, which is the next stitch, okay? The middle, you don't work anything into it. So go ahead and do that when you reach, when you have two stitches left on the left hand side here, come back and I will show you how to finish it off. See you guys in a bit. Okay, my lovelies. So I have worked my uh, double crochets across here and as you can see, that's how it looks like. And now I'm going to show you how to increase on this side as well so that you know how to increase on both sides. So as you see, I have a stitch here and a stitch at the end. So for this second last stitch, I'm going to go ahead and do two double crochets in the same stitch to increase. And then for the final stitch, I'm just going to go into the final stitch and do a double crochet like that. Okay. And then again, I will do a chain two and turn. And then I increase on this begin at this beginning. So for this chain two counts as a stitch. So in this next stitch, here, I'm going to do two double crochets in the same stitch. Okay. So now I have three at the beginning there, but one is the chain two. And then I'm going to continue to do the regular double crochets in every single stitch across until I have two stitches left at the end. And in the second last, I do two double crochets in the same stitch to increase and then one double crochet at the end. And you continue to do this until you have the circumference of your waist. Okay, so your waistline is uh, if you measure it, obviously, you will have the size for that. So mine is about 24 inches. So I'm going to show you how we measure that here. So my waist is about 24 inches. And if we measure what we already have here. So let's see if I put my tape measure at the beginning here. Here. And all the way to the other side. I have 16 inches so far. 
and this is from the other end to this side I have 16 so for me to get to my 24 I need to do that much more of an increase so which means then if I increase from what I have right now I have to increase three inches on each side for three to four inches on each side which means as I continue to increase on the sides my work is going to continue to go that way okay and when I get to my 24 inches then I have the uh, circumference of my waist completed and then we can join it at the back like this and then we can work the rest of the dress downwards okay so that is what we're gonna be aiming for so work until uh, if you have both sides joined like this is that it's the circumference of your waist or if you just have it straight like this and you measure you should be able to have what the length of your or the measurement of your waist is when you have that come back okay and I'll show you how to start the next part of the dress for the colors i am going to do a few rows of this color here i'm going to switch back to the pink and then i'm going to alternate those right, colors so go ahead and work until you have the length of your waist or the circumference of your waist when you have that come back and i'll show you what to do next okay my lovelies so i have gone ahead and completed the section that i talked about previously and as you can see here i pretty much alternated my colors after the cup i alternated by doing four rows of each of these colors and i have reached the length that is my waist um, size okay so again like i said work until you get to what the circumference of your waist is my circumference of my waist is 28 inches and as you can see here i am at 28 inches i'm just gonna bring this here so as you can see if I have it on the side like this, that's a one or starts from zero here. And then, of course, if I go to the other side on here, I am at 28, just a little bit over 28. OK, so that is the waist size for me. So that's where we're going to join the dress together so we can work uh, in the round and round way. And to join it, we're pretty much going to fold it in like this, as you can see here. We're going to fold it in like this and we're going to join it here and then we're going to work down the dress okay so obviously the first things first if you are changing colors like i do we are going to disconnect this color here so i'm just going to cut this color off here okay and what i will do is i will slip stitch on the other side so i will take my hook and I'll go on top of the first stitch on the other side and I'll bring it through and I'll slip stitch. Okay. And we'll do it here just like that. So that connects my two sides like that. Okay. Now, the other thing that we will need to do is you can use stitch markers or you can just estimate. Or you can use stitch markers by counting the stitches but you if you fold your work very nicely like this you will find that if you put a stitch marker and stitch marker here that's all you need to do if you're doubtful if you're exactly on the opposite side you can always count your stitches but i trust that i'm doing it in the middle on this side and in the middle on the other side just like that okay and the reason we do this is we're gonna start to increase on each side so here. what i need to do is i need to start to increase because my hips are wider than my waist my hips in fact is 38 inches while my waist is 28 inches so there's 10 inches that i'm gonna increase so that this dress can actually fit me uh in my hips okay but we're gonna change the color at this point and to change the color we're gonna make sure we're starting at this point here and then we're going to go around when we get to the stitch marker we increase and then we go to the uh, walk around and we get to the stitch marker we increase we get to here and then we turn and walk ourselves back the other way and this is how the rest of the dress pattern is going to work but for the increases we're going to stop when we have reached the widest part of our hips which for me will be 38 inches um then i will stop there right now i have 28 already i just need to do 10 more inches that will make it go wider before i stop and work on the other side so the first thing i'm going to do to change my color here is i will do a slip knot like this okay then i'm gonna lift my work and on the very first stitch on this side 
I'm going to put my hook through and then put it through the loop for of my uh, slip knot like this bring it through and just make sure you're careful not to pull uh, your yarn and then I'm going to do a chain of two because we're doing double crochets so one two and what I can do here is I can start to weave in the two uh, strength that I used to join the two colors here and then I'm gonna go into the next stitch right after that and I'll do a double crochet stitch and then into the next stitch I'm gonna do a double crochet stitch okay and into the next and do my double crochet stitch while I'm taking along the two strings that are hanging so I can weave them in and I don't have to worry about them later and then I just continue to go around like this until I get to the stitch marker so I will have you guys do the same get to the stitch marker when you get there come back and I will show you how to increase and then uh, we will move over to the next stitch marker where we will increase again and then um, I will bring you guys to the beginning here and what to do to start the next row and then I'll have you guys pretty much build it until you get to the widest part of your hips okay so if your hip size is the same as your waist size you don't have to do this part of increasing at all you just continue to work your work down like normal without the stitch markers where you're increasing at all but of course if your hips are wider then you will need to do make sure you're increasing so for now just work yourself to the stitch marker right here and then when you get to the, uh, the stitch before the stitch marker come back and i'll show you how to increase on the stitch marker see you guys in a bit okay my lovely so i just worked my double crochets here as you can see to the stitch marker so i will remove the stitch marker for now and into that stitch where i just took off the stitch marker i'm going to do two double crochets in that same stitch and that's gonna be my increase and then what I will do is I'll put my stitch marker back into that last stitch of the increase. And then I'll go ahead and just work my regular double crochet stitches around. And when you get to the next stitch marker, you do the same. So you do two stitches, two double crochet stitches in this, on the stitch marker. Place your stitch marker on the last uh, double crochet you do within the increase and then you continue so do that when you get to the end here when you do your very last double crochet in the last stitch on this side here come back and i will show you how to connect these two sides and how to start the next row and then we will continue building our work that way so i will see you guys when you get to the end of this row right here okay so i've worked my first row here of the increases for the hip size until i got back to where we started the project so of course increase at the stitch marker here increase at the stitch marker here and we're going to continue to increase that until we get the hip size that is for the size for you who for whoever you're making for or for yourself so again i have completed this to the last um stitch here so I'm just going to go on top of the chain two that I completed in the beginning of the row and I'm going to slip stitch there so that joins these sides like that okay and then I'm going to chain two and turn so we're going to start working in a circle here and in the next stitch here I'm going to go ahead and do my double crochet and in the next I'm going to do my double crochet and in the next and then again we continue to do this until we get to the stitch marker from now on when you get to the stitch marker you're not working your uh, increases on the stitch that has the stitch marker you're going to work on the one that is next to it so you're going to do a normal double crochet here and in the second stitch right after that you're going to do two double crochets in the same stitch Put your stitch marker in that last stitch that you do and then continue to do that all around until you get to the next stitch marker and at that stitch marker you do the same you don't go into this stitch marker here to do the two double crochets you do one here and in the next one you do two and then you place your uh, stitch marker in the last double crochet that you do and then you continue okay and you just continue to repeat that until you have your hip size uh, completed the circumference of the widest part of your hips okay so like i said for me it's 38 i already have 
uh, I already have 28 here because my waist size is 28 and then my hip size is 38. So I have to work this continuing to kind of build uh, up with increases until it gets wider. And when it gets wider, I will then stop and start working just straight down. And the way I will do that is I just remove my stitch markers and I no longer increase and I just continue to work. Um, I just continue to work my stitches down without any increases. But first I will get to the widest part of my hips, obviously 38. If you put your tape measure, if you put your dress down like this and you measure from here to here, you should be able to get 19 inches because the other side has the other remaining 19 to give you your 38, okay? Uh, and then again, like I said, when you have hit that size, give and take an inch here, an inch there, then you can remove these guys and then just continue to work your dress down all the way until you have the length that you're looking for. For the sake of this tutorial, like I said, again, because it is something that is requested by one of you lovelies, I am going to make this dress to be uh, all the way down to my ankles and hopefully I don't run out of yarn. If I do, I'll come back and let you guys know and I'll stop at that point. But at this at that moment, um, if you're following the tutorial and you want to make it long, you can go at that point as long as you want because nothing changes in terms of the stitch or the pattern, okay? All right, so I'm going to work on my dress. And when I have my length completed, I will come back and show you guys how it looks like, okay? So you guys in a bit. Okay, so I have gone ahead and pretty much completed the length of the dress here. So as you guys can see, I alternated the colors this way and I ended up with this pink color as the final color that i'm doing for it the dress is pretty long it's about 52 inches long so it's quite long it's gonna go all the way down to my ankles um so of course the length of the dress is absolutely up to you you can do it uh at any you can stop it at any length that you want uh, but this is pretty much how long i'm making it for this particular one okay and as you can see here so i already cut the yarn off here where i finished uh, my final row and these are alternation of four rows of each color so this is why it looks very even like that is because i'm doing the exact same number of rows for each color okay so as you can see as we go up the dress this is how the back of it would look like okay it has this v uh, shape in the back and then of course these are our cups here for the front side of the of the dress now i have also uh reconnected after connect disconnecting it at the end of the uh the dress i reconnected it here and i started the strap so this is an option for strap i did it like this first before just showing you how to do it just so you can have a choice of whether you want it like this or if you want to just do it as a chain uh, but this is pretty much a big chain. I'll show you how to do it. So it's, I wanted to make it thick like this as opposed to just like a, a chain chain, okay? So this is how long I have the strap so far, which means I will cut it over here and end this here. Um, it's long enough. And of course, you're going to make it so that is the length that you're looking for. For me, I have the length that I'm looking for. So I'm going to cut the yarn here like that. So I can show you guys how to actually do the other side. And I'm just going to lock this in here for now. We're going to leave it like that. Now I'm going to show you guys how to do the same thing I did on this side on here. And then that way you guys can do the first one and then go ahead and do the second one while you're offline. But I wanted to make sure you guys are okay with doing it like this. So this is an option. The other option is just putting your yarn here and doing a chain of however long you want. And then if you wanted to make it a little bit thicker, you could come back down the same chain by doing slip stitches. You guys obviously know how to do that because I've used these techniques a lot in the videos previously. So please check those out. Anywhere where I'm doing a strap, you're going to see that I use different techniques to do it. Okay, so this is just a different one here. All right, so let's grab our crochet hook here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm using the same crochet hook size. And I'm going to go ahead these uh chains that i have here or the this the section that i have here i'm going to go in there and what i will do first is i'm going to do a slip knot for the strap for the 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 um the yarn here like this and then of course we will bring that in and put that into that gap here and then bring it through and now that i have it here i'm going to do a chain of two just like that and then i'm going to go into that same hole and do a double crochet just like this okay 
I'm going to do a chain of two, then go into this gap here, then do a double crochet. So I hope you're following here. Chain two, go into this gap, and do a double crochet. Chain two, go into this gap and do a double crochet, okay? So this is pretty much how we create this thick strap like this. As you can see, it's the exact same one that I did on the other side. So we're going to continue to do this until you have the length. So because this is my second one, I'm just going to make sure I do the exact same number of rows that I did on this side. And these are the number of rows where I do complete a double crochet, counts as a row two rows three rows four rows so i have four rows all together i'm not 100 percent sure of how many i did over on this side i will count and i will make sure i match them up so that my straps are exactly the same length and you're going to do the same okay so create the first and then make sure you know how many rows there are and then you repeat the exact same thing just like we did here on the other side i'm going to do that what i will do as well as i'm offline is as you can see here i have all of these strings that i have from changing the color I am going to weave all of these in. They literally go down the, the seam, the back seaming of the dress. I'm going to go through all of them and weave them in or cut them off. And then I will do the same with these guys here that are hanging from starting our straps. When I have all of that done, I'm going to come back and show you a clean dress, which means it's done. Uh, but please go ahead and do the same and we will come back and look at how our finished project looks like. Okay, I will see you guys in a bit. Okay, so I've gone ahead and completed the straps. So as you can see here, um, I've done the straps to be the exact same length that I need. And as you can see, this is it here. Okay, so hopefully you guys have done the same. I've also gone ahead and weaved in all the um, strings that were hanging just from changing the colors. And, uh, and then I flipped my dress uh, the other way because the other side is cleaner. And as you can see where you weave in, you do have a little bit of spaces that you do have to cut the yarn off and these little knobs that are left around. Um, so by flipping it, you kind of make it so that the cleaner side is going to be what is the outside of your dress, okay? All right, so with that done, the dress is pretty much done. In terms of the uh, straps, I would recommend that you put it on. And when you have it on, you can actually then decide where you want the strap to start from. So it could be at this corner here, or it could be down here, depending on how the dress fits on you. Uh, for me, I will have the strap start at this, uh, where this color starts here. Okay, so I pretty much crisscross the strap. So I take the one that is coming from this side, and I bring it to this side. And of course, with that, I'm going to do the same, bring the other side of the strap to the opposite side of the body. And this is all obviously going to be working it in the back of uh, your dress. And obviously, it's good to have the straps put on before you put on the dress. That way, you don't struggle, especially if you have nobody to help you put the strap on in the back. And what I will do is I will then go from there to going to the beginning of the other uh, the same color, but the, so I'm skipping this light color altogether. And then I go here. And this is obviously an optional thing. You can obviously do the straps however you want to do them. So if you do want to make them closer, you can make them closer. If you want them to be on every single color, you can do that. That is absolutely up to you. It's just a choice that I'm making to do mine like this. So this part here is not something that you have to worry about. Just do it how you think looks best for you. Even this idea of crisscrossing it like this is absolutely up to you. You can do it however you want to do it, okay? So I'm going to do it like that, and I'm actually going to leave it here. Uh, then when I have it on, depending on how this V looks, I may just end up actually tying this here and making the rest of the strap kind of fall behind my back like that, okay? So this is pretty much the end of the project here, so not too much. I know some of you had asked for me to do some long dresses, so this is one of them here. Um, I wish I could have done it in a smaller yarn size. I just didn't have it in, in hand. Uh, and so this is the one that I'm going to show you to do it with. But of course, um, if you do have light yarn, especially if it's cotton, go ahead and do your dress in that because it does help a lot to make the dress a little bit lighter in terms of weight. And of course, you can uh, wear it in the summer as well when it's not that um, 
it's not gonna be as hot as wearing an acrylic dress okay so this is pretty much the end of the um the end of the uh, tutorial here thank you so much for watching it to the end and don't forget to visit subscribe as per usual don't forget to like comment and i will see you guys in the next one bye